Dr. Rao, how was IBS-C diagnosed? So IBS is diagnosed based on symptoms and in some special cases with additional testing. So most of the time, if you can take a good detailed history, a patient is reporting pain that has lasted for several weeks to several months, along with altered bowel habit, be it constipation or diarrhea, then that often clinches the diagnosis. But the challenge really is IBS is the greatest mimic. It mimics many other disorders and diseases. So in certain special situations, based on the condition, based on the patient's symptoms, we may have to exclude other more serious GI problems. So to do that, we may order some simple blood tests to check that the patient is not anemic, check thyroid function tests. If a patient has diarrhea, we want to exclude celiac disease or stick some stool tests to make sure they're not having any infection. And if these simple tests are all normal, then usually, along with symptoms, that clinches the diagnosis in the vast majority of patients. But in some selected patients, particularly if there's an elderly patient or a patient has some bleeding, we may need to do more specific tests such as colonoscopy, which is looking inside the colon with the telescope, or specialist tests such as motility or manometry to study anorectal function, sensation, and look for other causes of constipation, uh, such as dyssynergic defecation. Another test that some specialists tend to do is a balloon distension test in the rectum to find out the cause, which is hypersensitivity in the rectum, which, as I said, is one of the key mechanisms that leads to IBS. So these are the common tests that we tend to do in our practice.